guys. How's everybody doing today? All right, it's a beautiful Sunday afternoon. We want to welcome you here today to the 2010 Arkansas State Fair. My name is Bert. I'll be your host for the next 20 minutes or so. The person standing next to me is David, better known as Kachunga. Between the two of us, we're going to show you and try to teach you a little bit about our friends, the American Alligator. So on behalf of our company, Wildlife Entertainment Education, and our sponsor, Coleman Dairy. Folks, give them a nice big round of applause. Making our show a free show out here for everybody. Make sure you get yourself some ice cream, too, as you leave our show. Uh, my favorite is Cherry Garcia. Dave's favorite, Chunky Monkey. <laughs> so on behalf of all of us, we'd like to welcome you here today. We hope you're having a great time here at the fair. The show you're about to see today gets a little hype place as we go is alligator wrestling. In reality, alligators don't know anything about wrestling. In fact, if you give this animal the opportunity, it, it would much rather just turn around, go in the other direction. We get to send Dave down in the water. It's going to be his job today to catch this alligator. He'll pick it up, bring him up here on the stage so we can show you more about him. So for doing that for you guys, if you don't mind, let's give him a nice big Arkansas round of applause what he's about to do for you. That was good, Dave. We got a nice crowd, huh? Yeah? We like to get his applause up front in case he doesn't make it. <laughs> yeah, thanks. The alligator you see here today is not a real big one. Uh, he's about eight foot long. I say he's not that big because he's a male alligator, and as far as males are concerned, these animals can reach lengths of 14 feet. And in captivity, they can even weigh close to 2,000 pounds, so they get really big and heavy. For the educational purpose of our show here at the fair, be able to pick him up. I'm sure Dave will agree. This gator is big enough. You may notice he has that wooden pole in his hand. Don't worry, guys. The pole's not a weapon. It's not used to hit or hurt the alligator. It's just a tool that he uses to try to guide the animal, test its reflexes, see how fast he is. That's important because alligators are reptiles. They're cold-blooded. If you're not really sure as to what cold-blooded means, simply put, they have no way of regulating their body temperature. So if it gets really cold outside, so does the alligator. His body temperature will drop, his metabolism will slow, he gets really stiff and sluggish, he can't move around. But as the temperature rises, the body temperature increases, then his metabolism moves faster, he gets a little more flexible, a lot more active, a lot more dangerous and harder to work with for the show. So that stick will help David find out just how fast the gator's gonna be. So Dave, they're all waiting. Why don't you go out and find out how fast he is? Take your stick. He's got to get the alligator out from underneath the ramp here. The alligator, as he gets closer to him, you'll see a real attitude change come over the gator. You might even be able to hear him hiss during our show. The hissing sound that he makes is one of the few sounds these animals can create. It's a warning, telling David he's getting too close and to stay back. Hey now, if you ever happen to wake up one morning here in Arkansas, you look out in your yard, you find that you have an alligator there, and you don't want him there, we're going to show you what you do to get rid of him. Show them, Dave. It's real simple. All you have to, hey, man, you can't shoot them. Yeah, real funny. It's illegal to shoot the wild alligators, guys. We get in a lot of trouble. But here's what you can try to do. Try to get behind him. Reach down, grab him by his tail. And once you've got the gator by the tail, just drag him to your neighbor's place and leave him there. Of course, I'm kidding, guys. Alligators are really agile. As you'll soon see, they can quickly turn and bite. They'll bite your hand even up as high as your elbow. It's not a good idea to grab them there. That quick strike you see the alligator make as he turns and tries to bite is the fastest motion the alligator's capable of. They're so fast from side to side, they can even catch fish. But you know, we have been misled. Some of us out there is how fast the alligator can actually run on land. They don't run as fast as you might have been told. In fact, guys, we had the opportunity once to clock this gator. He was running 12 miles an hour. Dave was in front doing 13. That was a pretty good race, till Dave got tired. In the water, though, they swim really fast. They use that big, strong tail they have to swim to speeds of up to 25 miles an hour. Real fast in the water, we definitely can't outswim them. Now, you'll see how he has his tail kind of curled off to that side. Well, he's got it cocked. He's ready to swing. Now, some people have been told that pe alligators will use their tail to break your legs. This is really an exaggeration. That tail is primarily used for swimming. Although, if something were to get too close, like David, demonstrate. The tail is cocked. He swings it right there as he smacks him in the back of the calf. 
Well, the alligator wasn't trying to break his legs. He was trying to hook him with that tail and pull him into his mouth so he could bite. The jaws on the alligator are really his only weapon. Now, to show you a little bit more about these jaws and just how they work, Dave is going to get really close to the alligator's mouth. Come on, man. Keep up. Now, as he approaches the alligator, the gator opens up its mouth real wide in self-defense. He can take the pole he has, pass it right inside of the alligator's mouth, and as you see, nothing happens. The alligator doesn't bite down on it. The reason that's real simple, look where its eyes are. They sit high on top of his head. He can't see down below on what's inside of his mouth. But if anything were to touch the inside of the jaws, you would all see a completely different reaction. So to show you what I'm talking about, Dave's gonna put his hand in the gator's mouth. How about it, guys? Y'all want to see Dave put his hand inside the gator's mouth? Me too. I'm not joking. He's going to show you how the jaws work. He's going to put his hand in there. He'll touch the inside of the jaws and hopefully get his hand out before those jaws come crashing down. If you have a camera, get him out. Focus him right on the gator's mouth. You might get a really awesome picture with David's hand inside the gator's mouth. Hopefully it's not stuck. But if it is... That's a cool picture, too. <laughs> He's going to get that gator out. You guys might notice the alligator is spending a lot of time trying to get underneath the ramp. He thinks it's a place for him to hide. He just really would rather be left alone. But out here in the middle, we can show you just how these jaws work. So here we go, guys. It's going to happen fast. And that was fast enough. Hey, guys, give him a nice big round of applause. That's how those jaws work. Hey, did you everybody get their pictures? Everybody? No? Dave, do it again. He said no. From here, though, he's going to go ahead and catch the alligator. He's got one of two ways he can do this. One way is to push the alligator from the front, pin his head back, grab a hold of the jaws, and hold on to it as it thrashes, rolls, and tries to bite. Another way is to try to sneak up behind him, jump down on the back. Either one is just as dangerous. He'll use whichever technique he's most comfortable with, or whichever one will soak the cameraman's fancy camera. So here we go. Get behind him, and that's the back technique, guys. Give him a nice big round of applause. That's the easy part. He still has to pick him up. Eight foot long, folks, so keep it going for him. He's got to wake his way up the ramp. Here, Dave, hand it to me. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, watch the tail. He still has to get those jaws shut, and jaws are shut. And that's how you do it, folks. Give him another nice big round of applause. Let him hear you. That wasn't easy. I don't know about y'all, that wore me out. <laughs> had to run. You got him? Use both hands, man. You remember what happened last time at our last fair? You let go like that, he shot right off the stage. You guys better watch out. <laughs> he won't let him go, and now he's had a second to catch his breath. From here, we can show you more about the alligator. Right here at the end of the snout, you may see these two little holes. That's the gator's nose. That's what it breathes through. Anytime an alligator goes underneath the water, he's holding his breath. They can hold their breath for well over an hour, but they always have to come back up to get more air. His eyes sit high on top of his head, and that allows the alligator to sneak up on his prey. He'll keep his big body hidden underneath the surface of the water. Only the eyes and nose will stick up above. Now these eyes, they're very unique. Watch this. If the alligator senses danger near them, he can sink his eyes down into his skull for their protection. Kind of gross, huh? Yeah. Well, it doesn't hurt the alligator. When the danger passes, look, his eyes, they roll right back up into position. And then, and then the gator. You ain't right. And then the gator would go about his business. Directly behind the eyes is a very small brain. The gator's got one just like it. It's very small. <laughs> Never mind. And on either side of the brain are where the ears are found. Normally you can't see them. They lay underneath a thick flap of skin. David, lift up the flap. You can see down into the ear. They have an excellent sense of hearing. They use it along with their eyesight as they swim up and down the waterways at night. They watch and listen for any small animal that might get a little too close to the water's edge. During the daytime, you usually find the alligators just laying out, sunning themselves. But if you ever were to see one eating, you might see them eating small mammals, like raccoons, possums, and armadillos. Now, they also eat a lot of fish, wading birds, and other reptiles, like smaller gators, snakes, and turtles. Now, some of you might be wondering, how do they eat turtles? How do they crack those thick shells? Well, just as you heard a few moments ago when that gator snapped his jaw shut, 
They have so much power in biting down. A gator like this can bite with a pressure of around 2,000 pounds per square inch in force. Very strong, powerful jaws. They have no problem cracking those thick turtle shells. With that in mind, David's going to open the gator's mouth for you so you can get a good look at the inside of the jaws. He has to be really, really careful with all that pressure and biting down. He's got to make sure he keeps his fingers away from the sides of those jaws. So Dave, be careful as you try to show the folks the inside of the gator's mouth. <laughs> you be quiet. <laughs> He's going to open them up for you. Take a look in the back of the gator's throat, guys. Notice that there's no hole in the back, no throat opening. It's covered by a small half moon shaped flap of skin. Careful, Dave. Get it back open for him. Right there in the back. Can everybody see it? No? Dave, point it out. The flat lets the gator bite under the water with as much pressure as it can above. You also see the teeth. They have up to 80 teeth in their mouth, 40 on the top jaw, 40 on the bottom. These teeth are sharp and pointed. They're not blunt. Blood teeth like ours are made for chewing. They don't chew their food. They swallow everything whole. If the gator gets hold of something too big to swallow whole, he'll bite in, shake his head from side to side, or death roll over and over till he rips off a piece he can swallow. Hey, guys, let's give Dave a nice big round of applause for getting the gator's mouth open for you today. It's a good thing he's keeping his fingers out of the gator's mouth because he's not done yet. I saw some cameras out there. You might want to get him out and ready. He's going to try to perform something for you that was first developed by the Seminole Indians down in Florida over 200 years ago. Back then, when they were the only people living in the state of Florida, they would go out in the swamps and they would catch these alligators. They'd bring them back to their tribe alive. Now, usually they'd go out in pairs. So one person would catch the alligator. The other one would take a rope and tie it around the gator's jaws to make him safe to move. Sometimes they'd go by themselves. They didn't have anybody with them to help them hold them. I'm not helping. To hold the mouth shut. They had to do it by themselves. So they came up with this little trick. We call it the bulldogging technique. The handler would take the gator's jaws, close them, and place them right between his chin and chest. Using only that pressure, they would try to keep the mouth shut, then let go, grab a rope, tie it around the jaws. He's not going to tie the jaws shut. There's no need for that today. But for your pictures, he's going to let go, have his arms outspread. So get your cameras ready. Dave, take your time. And there's your shot. Hold it, Dave. Hold it. Say cheese. Cheese. <laughs> then real quick, if you had a rope, you can take it tight right around the jaws. And there you have it, guys. That's a bulldogging technique. Let's give him another nice big round of applause. Good job. He used to have a double chin. <laughs> Hey guys, before we go on to the last part of the show, real quickly, I'd like to take just a second to get serious with everyone. Now Dave and I, we came out here to the fair with our alligators to try to show you and teach you a little bit about these amazing animals. We have a lot of fun doing it. But living here in Arkansas, there's that chance you might go out and find an alligator out in the wild. Boys and girls, adults, if you ever see one, make sure you stay away from it. Don't get too close or even try to catch him like you've seen David do here today. Keep in mind that David... He is a professional. He's been handling alligators for over 20 years. He knows exactly what he's doing when he's around these animals. Still, every once in a while, he has slipped up and been bitten. He's been very fortunate in his career, never to have been seriously injured. An alligator, even at this size, could take a man's arm right off their body, or worse. So, boys and girls, adults, if you see an alligator, make sure you respect him. Don't get too close. Stay safe. Now many of you may have noticed by now that I'm carrying with me a gun, like I do every time that David works with an alligator in our show. We get asked a lot of different questions about the gun. For all you animal lovers out there, I reassure you this gun is only to be used in case of an extreme emergency. That emergency would be if the gator were to somehow get away from David, turn around and bite him, and it just wouldn't let him go. It'd be very unfortunate, I'm sure most of you would understand. I'd have to shoot Dave. Can't shoot the alligator, they're protected. 